Thank you to Nintendo for providing us with a review copy of Pokemon Violet and its expansion pass, The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. With the announcement of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet receiving the expansion pass, The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, it would naturally be the case that I sought to review them. Over this period, as I was playing, taking notes, and the Pokemon company revealed how expansive this DLC would be via its social media, we felt that it would be best to cover it all within one large video review, rather than two or three separate videos. Additionally, with so much passage of time, I thought it would be best to include how my view of Pokemon Violet as a whole has changed. Thus, while the beginning of this review includes the original Pokemon Violet review that was released in January of 2023, I would still encourage you to rewatch it to see how my opinions changed, as I do a greater look back on the main game later in the video. With that being said, let's head into Paldeo one last time. Last year's announcement of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet left me weary. Not just because of the trailer, but out of fear that Game Freak was wearing themselves out, alternating teams developing the games or not. But putting aside my concerns regarding the game's development cycles, let's get to the obvious. Pokemon Violet is the newest entry in the mainline Pokemon video game series. In fact, Scarlet and Violet mark the beginning of the multimedia juggernaut's ninth generation, and with them come a blend of familiar franchise aspects with new ones. Battle and train your Pokemon against wild Pokemon that roam the world, either by engaging in a battle or with the new Let's Go mechanic, allowing you to send your leading Pokemon forth as it attempts to knock out what's in its path on its own. Other Pokemon trainers are always eager for a battle, but now you can choose which ones to challenge by talking with them first. Locking eyes with strangers no longer instigates a fight. Most importantly, you'll experience the newly discovered Pokemon of the Paldea region, along with classics from prior generations. If you want to complete the Pokedex, you'll have plenty to do. Scarlet and Violet's biggest shakeup comes from how you progress across the region. Rather than travel from gym to gym, or wherever the story forces you to go, you get to choose which way your story plays out. Pokemon Violet features three storylines to focus on. Taking on the gym challenge in Pokemon League as ushered by your battle-crazed rival Nimona, taking on the Titan Pokemon within the region to uncover powerful herbs with your rude but passionate classmate Arvin, or take on the delinquent Team Star and their bosses while led by a mysterious hacker. To specify, you're playing out the order in which you complete the story. In order to beat the game, you need to complete all three of these threads. But this freedom in how you approach them is really where Pokemon Violet shines. If you want to focus on the League, go ahead. If your interest lies with exploring, then you should seek out those powerful herbs with Arvin. That's how I went about playing the game. I didn't care for grinding along through another typical Pokemon experience. I wanted to enjoy my time exploring the new region and coming across any new Pokemon that I encountered as I ride on the back of Miraidon, one of Paldea's deities. However, once I decided to challenge the gyms and fight Team Star, I was severely underleveled and in control of Pokemon that no longer sought to listen. But that is what I like about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the opportunity for vastly different experiences. This isn't yet another linear trek where the only meaningful variance amongst players are which Pokemon we stick on our teams. I do think this could go further, borrowing aspects from the anime and how each companion of Ashes had their own objectives, perhaps mastering contests could lead to its own ending, but that's something to focus on in a separate video, not this review. There's plenty more to enjoy in Pokemon Violet thanks to the numerous additions and quality of life improvements. Instead of digging into your bag for potions or berries, the new auto healing feature will heal the selected Pokemon based upon what's already in your bag. Know where you want to go next? Set a destination marker on the map. Dynamaxing is gone as the new battle mechanic, Testerialize, is present, allowing you to change the typing of any Pokemon based upon what its current Terra type is. Then there's a vastly improved online functionality, which allows you and three other people to play the entire game together. Regrettably, there are unfortunate drawbacks due to the other Pokemon game that was released within the same year, Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's very strange that this new title features elements that were introduced in Arceus, but don't carry the torch without stumbling. Shiny Pokemon are visible within the overworld, but as Pokemon can despawn, there isn't that heart stopping sound effect that informs a player when one is in the vicinity. The Masuda method for hatching eggs has been known for a long time now, and while Legends Arceus didn't include eggs, it did feature the ability to release multiple Pokemon at a time. That's also gone. The massive amount of engagement between the world and the player in both games are spectacular, but the step back that Violet takes is by removing the ability for catching Pokemon outside of battle. 
which is a really strange omission given the addition of taking out Pokemon without necessarily battling them. Moving forward with the downside, it's been about two months since Scarlet and Violet's release, and both the fans and Nintendo are aware of their unpolished buggy state. Whether you experience it for yourself or through the many other players on social media, Scarlet and Violet are full of issues. Models freak out, wild Pokemon are stuck on the walls or floor, and the camera is generally consistent during wild encounters or dispositions itself within the overworld in tight spots. Occasionally, the camera lets you see underneath the world, and some unlucky players have fallen through the world. Oh, and Pokemon pop in and out of existence. Terra Pokemon disappear without reason if you come too close. You can walk right through your rival's home. People discover duplication glitches. The Elite Four music loops the first few seconds. And there's so much more that I can't remember or just haven't encountered myself. Out of all the Nintendo published games that I've seen people talk about so far, I've never seen a game released in this state. I'd imagine that the people that haven't faced at least five glitches are part of the minority, as I thought it wouldn't happen to me, but it did. Several times. The glitches can be from a minor UI piece being stuck on the screen to the game hard crashing from playing together with friends, which again is the big new feature for this title. And it's truly a shame since Game Freak's passion for these games is palpable. So many of the new Pokemon designs are great, the bigger cutscenes feature a lot more movement and character and being able to emote and play together with your friends is a treat. There is so much fun to be had with this game and the more I play it, the more I like it. However, my job as a critic is to not just analyze different games as they work within their medium and as a work of art. My job is to also evaluate whether these games are products that are worth your time and money. Even though two months have passed, I don't think Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are worthy of the spectacular sales numbers that it has achieved. I'm enjoying Pokemon Violet, I truly am, but this lack of polish is inexcusable, and for those that haven't purchased Scarlet or Violet yet, I suggest waiting until a patch addresses their issues. For those still looking to purchase one of them, wait for a discount. And regardless of how much fun there is to be found within Violet, I believe purchasing it or Scarlet sends a message to Nintendo that releasing games in such an unfinished state is acceptable. It is not. Initially mistaking it as a new Pokemon Legends game, an expansion pass for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was revealed during the 2023 Pokemon Day presentation. The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero A two-part adventure that would see players tackling two completely new environments and scenarios. How will these fare in involving Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as games? Well, no need to wait for that answer. Keep watching as we delve right into my thoughts. When Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out, it came with a structural problem. In Game Freak's attempt to create a fully open world Pokemon experience, they inadvertently made a game that lacked any hard obstacles for players to overcome, when compared with prior games. Despite granting the player the choice of how they wanted their adventure to unfold, in my playthrough of Pokemon Violet, I never felt motivated to become the champion. I felt no incentive in-universe to do so, rather it felt like it was just something that I would need to do if I wanted to say, I beat the game. This meant that when the game's first DLC dropped, The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, Part 1, The Teal Mask, the only thing motivating me to play it was the game's narrative. The story of this DLC is that the player and several other students have been nominated to head over to the land of Kitakami on a joint field trip with Unova's Blueberry Academy. On this trip, the player meets Carmine and Kieran, two important rival characters. While Kieran is timid but open to friendship with us, Carmine is more erratic and combative against us outsiders within her homeland. Despite her initial opposition, the game's main theme is around bringing together not just people of different backgrounds, but also those of different personalities. Thus, the player will have to work with these two as you travel around the lands of Kitakami, learn his folk tales, and discover what exactly the Teal Mask is. While there were some narrative decisions that I was unhappy with, wishing that I could have dialogue options that went against the pleas of other characters, I still enjoyed the consequences of what unraveled, and I'm excited to see how part 2, the Indigo Disc, will conclude it. Rather than treat this new expansion as an extension of my Paldean journeys, I treated my adventure through Kitakami as if I was starting fresh, catching the first Pokemon I saw, a level 12 Puchiana, and forming a whole new team around the Pokemon I wanted to encounter. By playing the game this way, I felt like I was able to enjoy my time with Pokemon Violet's DLC even more. As I traveled across Paldea, the ability to go anywhere I pleased meant that I could face challenges such as the Titan Pokemon for me right on abilities, despite my team being unprepared for them. 
thus, if there was something that I found interesting, the onus of being well equipped for such obstacles felt like it had to come from seeking out to grind and find my own lower level challenges, rather than Game Freak guiding the journey in such a direction. However, traveling across the smaller land of Kitakami and following just one rather linear goal made the adventure easier to digest and manage. With most of the surrounding trainers and wild Pokemon growing in strength as the narrative progressed, guiding the player throughout more of the land and against alligator battles, I felt better prepared for said challenges. Some grinding was still needed to stand a chance against Carmine, Kieran, and more as I didn't have the best team type advantage wise. But the grind wasn't one that saw me traveling towards an entirely different direction or goal, just a few levels and another attempt at a challenging battle. It felt like I was playing something akin to the previous titles. Granted, this challenge was self-imposed. If I were to use the Pokemon I raised from the base game, the only hurdle would be walking from place to place. This is where I hope the next part of the DLC, Part 2, The Indigo Disc, could leave me more entertained. The TL Master is very well at being a character-driven narrative, but as the player, I didn't feel much responsibility for my actions or that there was much for me to do. There was a minigame as part of Kitakami's festival, but outside of that, I was primarily walking from point to point and doing battles to progress things for the other characters and their relationships with one another. Was there anything I was doing for my benefit as a trainer or as a character within the world, especially with my freedom of choice? No, not really. Additionally, the one other blemish featured within the DLC is a prominent problem that existed within the main game, the graphical and optimization issues. With Pokemon Violet suffering several issues such as a slowdown or the camera infrequently clipping through the terrain, and occasionally made traversing across the land feel like a tedious exercise. The island itself already didn't have any other engaging activities or many captivating environments to explore. So the only fun to gain from traveling was to see what other Pokemon I could find rather than a way to find them. However, where the exception did excel presentation wise was the music. For both Carmine and Kieran's themes, I felt a sense of energy no matter how long the songs would loop throughout our long battles. Overall, despite the issues that I feel are present within this first part of the DLC, I truly had a very fun time being able to experience a more linear and narrow adventure with very interesting and expressive characters. With the TL Master's ending, I hope that the story that Game Freak is building towards can not only lead to more engaging characters, but also a satisfying end. With gameplay footage that we've already seen of the Indigo Disc, it already looks like there will be much more to do. Whether it will be fun is to be discovered once it releases on December 14th, 2023. Which already happened, so let's just continue forward into talking about the Indigo Disc. But as a final word, if you are interested in more interesting characters being introduced within the world of Pokemon, I think purchasing Pokemon Violet's Expansion Pass is worth it for this alone. Unlike the Expansion Pass of Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet feature a connected story between Part 1, the Teal Mask, and Part 2, the Indigo Disc. Thus, I'll need to provide a brief synopsis of what happened at the end of Part 1. If you'd like to avoid spoilers, then it would be best, at this point, to experience the DLC for yourself and avoid the review for this part of the game, as well as the epilogue. Throughout your journey with Kieran, discovering the folktales of Kitakami, it's revealed that the band of three Pokemon thought to have protected the lands from a vicious ogre was not true. As explained to the player and Carmine by Kieran's grandfather, Ogre Pond and the mask worn by it were attacked and stolen by the trio, with the villagers misunderstanding and believing that the trio fell aiming to protect Kitakami. Why is it only being told to us? Well, that's because on the night of Kitakami's festival, the player and Carmine ran into Ogre Pond, and thanks to Big Sister over here, we decided to keep it a secret. 
However, this secret doesn't last for long, as Kieran overhears his grandpa's story. Skipping forward to the end of the Teal Mask story, Kieran completely loses his cool, with his sister quickly becoming friends with the visiting player, both keeping a secret from him, the player being stronger than him, and then also catching Ogre Pond on top of that, Kieran has completely changed by the time it's time for us to return to Paldea. He has grown increasingly distant and is now vowing to grow stronger and stronger. For the Enigo disc, we see ourselves on another trip outside of Paldea. However, we're not just traveling to another region, but to another school. Kieran and Carmine School to be exact, Blueberry Academy in the Unova region. Don't get too excited though, it may be in Unova, but it is secluded so far off from any sort of land that you won't see many familiar locales. However, you will experience many things and people that evoke the feeling of Unova. From the returning Pokemon and Remix Generation 5 music, to the unique trainers that you'll meet. Let's continue on that last point. Not only are you a transfer student, but as you quickly become integrated into Blueberry Academy, you'll meet and befriend a group of trainers that will provide to be formidable opponents. Lacey, Crispin, Amiris, and Drayton, the elite four of Blueberry Academy. However, the ability to face them won't be immediately unanimous. The BB Elite Four Challenge is meant to be accessible only to students originally enrolled at BB Academy. Thus, whether we should be able to participate is up for discussion, but not a long one. While Crispin is hungry to cook up some fiery battles against you, Drayton is one half of the main push for encouraging you to take on the BB Elite Four. The other half? Well, is none other than the previously timid Kieran. That's right, the ending of the Teal Mask wasn't just for show. Kieran sought out strength and achieved it by becoming the champion at Blueberry Academy. However, in his quest for power, he's become incredibly rude to the point of somewhat being a bully. And I love it. But the Teal Mask introduced an assertive new rival and friend with Carmine, Kieran was introduced as a shy kid that you didn't treat too well as a friend, thus becoming your rival. Not only does this provide us with a jerk for a rival, something that I always appreciate in Pokemon as they wind up being the best rivals, but this also presents a satisfying outcome from the previous part of the DLC. The player is the reason for the way Kira has become. We, and Carmine, are the cause for Kira's descent, and now the leading fisher in the Elite Four's friendship. Thus, the Endigo Disc is not just an adventure about some legendary Pokemon we won't see until the end, but it's ultimately about patching up a friendship. So, how do we go about patching up said friendship? Well, you may be thinking, defeat the BB League, and yeah, you're right. But if it was that easy, where would be the fun in that? Instead, what you must complete are BBQs, Blueberry Quest. As you traverse around the Blueberry Academy's terrarium, essentially a multi-environment wild area, you will be given a set of three small activities, like taking photos of a specific Pokemon or catching a certain type to receive BP. These points can be utilized in various ways, such as upgrading the BB League club room with different functions, changing your throwing style, obtaining items and TMs for battle, unlocking wild starter Pokemon, and most importantly, taking on each of the Elite Force challenges. But, for those other purposes I mentioned, you should take on your Blueberry Quest by creating a union room with some friends. Within them, quests will be shared amongst all the players, allowing anyone to complete them and for everyone to receive the points. Attacking BBQs is great with friends, but a slog on your own. Thankfully, the Elite Four challenges are very cheap. So, is that it? No, there's still one major important factor that I've left out. Every trainer battle within the Blueberry Academy, all of them, are double battles. Now, you may be thinking, oh, that'll be pretty easy. No, it wasn't. At least for me. The Indigo Disc is incredibly difficult as trainers are high leveled and use strategies that take decent advantage of the double battle format. Maybe it was easy for some people, but I barely had Pokemon that worked well in double battles, let alone within the level 70s. Thus, I brought in some of my more competitive Pokemon that I had sitting in Pokemon Home. 
I have to give major props to my level 100 speed boost Blaziken from Pokemon X. I don't have much to state presentation wise. The game still has graphical issues and had occasional instances of freezing, assumably due to the large area available to you at once. I enjoyed hearing the remix Gen 5 music and finally having an outfit that looked cool though. There are other features available within the DLC, but it didn't appeal to me as my attention was set solely on the story and gameplay Game Freak sought to deliver. The writing was not only quite funny, but Violet's Suspension Pass probably features the best character writing in the series. Even when motivations may be clear, characters will often surprise you with how mischievous or truly kind-hearted they can be in achieving or communicating their goals. To play the Indigo Disc, obviously you'll need to own the Expansion Pass, but also you need to have completed the Teal Mask as the stories are directly connected. While the character writing is what provided the majority of my enjoyment in Part 1, Part 2 excels further in this regard and provides a challenge for trainers to test how well they would fare in an often narratively underutilized battle format. I truly had a lot of fun concluding my journey through Pokemon Violet's The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. Or so I thought, as it turns out that there is one final piece of this playthrough, The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. Epilogue. As this narratively takes place as an ending, hence the name, I will be dancing around the major details and ending featured within the second half of the Indigo Disc. I'll state that the player and Kieran are on good terms with one another, but how that happened is an epic tale for you to experience on your own. Now, to execute the epilogue of the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero, two events must occur first. First, you need to obtain the mystery gift, the mysterious Petra Berry via the internet. Second, You'll need to have defeated each of the gym leaders and participated in the ace tournament idea as proposed by Nimona, Jita, and Director Clavel. The second part was something that I didn't know was a requirement, so I tried to complete this task as fast as possible, rotating out my strongest Pokemon to quickly get past something that I really didn't want to do. However, as fast as the battles went, I genuinely enjoyed re-encountering and learning more about the personalities of the gym leaders, Tulip being my favorite as she provided the biggest words of encouragement for myself as a Pokemon trainer and as a person. Once this is all done, you'll want to head to Peachy's store at the community center in Kitakami. Don't talk to the lady. What you do want to do is talk to the almost hard to notice purple decoration that's on her stand. This is what will trigger the story for the hidden treasure of Area Zero, the epilogue. To leave you with some mysteries that will encourage you to play the game yourself, I'll only share some of my thoughts and not explain the whole story. With amends made and the majority of plot concerns resolved, the epilogue takes a rather different approach in just being a gathering of friends attempting to spend some time together. The direction of the events that unfold end up being very ridiculous, probably the most comedic sequence in the series. Additionally, this epilogue also reignites the idea of mystery gift events, something that hasn't been fully utilized since, to my memory, the Keldeo event with Pokemon Black and White. However, at the same time, to access this you need to spend $35 for the expansion pass. As it's a packaged deal, the only way to encounter this part of the story is by doing everything else Pokemon Violet has to offer in its story first. Furthermore. Although an expiration date isn't listed, it'd probably be best for the mystical Petra Berry to be included as part of the expansion pass inherently. If there is ever a case where online interactivity becomes no longer available for the Nintendo Switch, that would remove a piece of what's regarded as the conclusion of the DLC. Although it was strange, and I did feel like it ran its course after the first half, experiencing a mystery gift event again was worth it. I hope that this can be something that Game Freak continues to reincorporate back into the series but hopefully not something you have to pay a lot for. In fact, due to preservation concerns, perhaps it would just be best to incorporate more secrets within the game itself that truly lead players to exploration and worthwhile surprises. And this is where I want to take a step back. Looking back at my original Pokemon Violet review video from January 2023, my view in the title Post Review began to take a new, primarily negative shape as I continued to play. In my original review, I showcased great appreciation for the amount of freedom that Game Freak allowed and the difference in playthroughs that would be experienced amongst players. 
Although I still believe that the difference in experience was worthwhile is something that should continue in the future, what I found to be the very dull in-betweens of Paldea greatly hampered the majority of my time with this game. Now, this could be my fault, as my trek to Paldea could have been greatly fastened by bringing over my stronger Pokemon from previous games. Perhaps focusing on exploring the land of the region first and foremost rather than honing my team to take on the gym challenge and Team Star was a poor way to play. However, that experience was one that I still had, and I believe that the openness and some of the story within Violet are part of the growing distaste I had for this game. Arvin was easily the most enjoyable character in the game before the DLC. While the ability to access more of Miradon's expedition capabilities was the reason I tackled the Patch of Legends storyline first, reaching out to my empathy in regards to his sick Mabel stiff and the disconnect he had with his father was what made me stick to his story without much deterring. But, Tackling his storyline first and foremost, even while underleveled, left me with not much more to explore and just consistent trainer battles that I ended up simultaneously not being prepared for and uninterested in. As my favorite franchise that I spent so much of my life vested into, I never felt more uninterested in doing the things that I usually do in a Pokemon game. If battling random trainers is going to be left up to my choice, I'm not going to do it because, to me, that doesn't feel like there is an ever-present challenge or guide to the bigger challenges. Thus, I instead waited for the DLC to arrive to hopefully revive my interest in Pokemon Violet. As you've heard my thoughts on the hidden treasures of Area Zero Part 1, The Teal Mask, you know that that did happen. I treated that part of the DLC as if I was starting from scratch, and I was treated to a small expedition not only in a new area but with new characters that I was constantly interacting with and enjoyed spending time with. So, once I completed the Teal Mask and before the Indigo Disc was released, I returned to Paldea and tied up the remaining loose ends. I completed the Path to Victory and became a champion, as is the standard with every Pokemon game. I didn't care too much for Nimona before and my opinion hadn't changed much by the end of that storyline. I don't hate her, but her battle hungry nature was a tad annoying. I did enjoy meeting the Elite Four, the strongest band of trainers under the top champion, who had very unique quirks and interactions between themselves and myself that made them stand out more than any previous Elite Four. I also completed Starfall Street, and although the leaders of Team Star are very interesting regarding their visual design, the amount of grinding I did for both them and Victory Road overshadowed any interest I now had in them. This doesn't mean that their bad characters are uninteresting, but I just felt detached by the time I returned to face them. Additionally, Cassiopeia being Penny was no big surprise. It was incredibly obvious that she would be Team Star's head honcho. If Game Freak and the Pokemon Company intends to do a big twist, I think they should take notes on what they did with Volo. Have them work in the background and seemingly have certain connections to other important factors within the story. But don't present them as someone you will mainly be interacting with on your journey, which was the case with Penny in trailers. However, the conclusion to Starfall Street showed me how much the writing, via director Clavel, intends to present Yuva Academy as a home with care for all of its students, despite their delinquent actions and by admitting that authority can fail in its duties to those that it is meant to serve. Forgetting about the giant crater at the center of Paldea, I thought that completing the last story would lead to the credits. However, Paldea's mysterious centerpiece was the next target in Pokemon Violet's final main storyline, and the one to cause a large shift in my perception of this title. Upon descending into Area Zero with Arvin, Penny, and Nimona traveling alongside me to uncover the secret within Paldea and what happened to Professor Turo, Arvin's father, I was left in utter shock. The music within the game from this point forward was outstandingly awe-inducing, while also very intimidating. The huge descending landscapes bathed in light as my three friends ran alongside me to different points of interest and encountered future versions of Pokemon I knew from previous regions, to finally concluding with a battle with my team of Pokemon against what Arvin's father left behind and then fighting alongside Miraidon against the culmination of Professor Turo's obsessive research. Finally. After getting through all of the visual glitches that played this game, and still do, overcoming the grindfest that I, in a way, had put myself on the path of, after getting past the parts of the story that I no longer had much of an inkling of care of, I finally found myself having pure, unquestioned excitement and fun with Pokemon Violet. I felt like I could finally praise this game for delivering what was probably the best endgame and writing within a Pokemon game, 
showcasing the damages and severity of the failures that come with obsessive ideals or infatuations, as previously presented within Pokemon Sun and Moon and Pokemon Black and White, which are my two favorite games within the franchise story-wise. Does this make Pokemon Violet a great game? In my eyes, no. Despite the amount of appreciation and love that I have for the character writing featured within this title, I am far from saying Pokemon Violet is a good game. If the rest of the game was as engaging and intriguing as Area Zero was, perhaps I would say such is the case. However, the reality was still that half of my experience with this title was based with this taste. Playing for the sake of playing and the entire game, even after a year, is played with poor optimization, graphical issues, glitches, and questionable decisions. I would prefer if Game Freak scaled back from open world games and kept to a more linear or hybrid format a la Pokemon Legends Arceus. However, I can say that Pokemon Violet is a title that, despite all of its issues, presents some of Game Freak's best efforts and still succeeds at touching the player's heart by the game's end and beyond. If you are a person that has not yet purchased Pokemon Violet, I would say you should. If you can find it on sale, that's always the best way to go. Save your money, you may need it for whatever reason. But this is a game that Pokemon fans should experience, despite all of its glaring issues.